Hey best friends, welcome back to my channel. So, I know I've been gone for a while, but I'm back. Hey. So today I have an Amazon review for you guys. And no, this is not sponsored. I pay for this with my own quaint. Hello. This is from Icy Hair, and I've worked with this company before. So I just wanted to see if the quality was the same versus me getting it for sponsorships, right? So this is from Amazon Prime, and I ordered it, and I got it the following day. If you have Prime, you can do that. If not, it takes somewhere in between five days for you to get it. And this is what I got. These bundles was $140. You get three bundles and a closure. <laughs> and she looks good. So I just wanted to show you guys because Valentine's Day is coming and there are so many Amazon um, sellers that sells hair. And I definitely want to get in the mix of reviewing more hair from Amazon because it's an easier way to obtain hair, especially if you're in a rush. You feel me? So I do have some Amazon reviews on my channel. Um, I did make this into a wig. If you want to see that, I will link it at the end of this video. So continue to watch this video and at the end of it, you'll see a how to make a wig video, okay? If you guys have any questions or concerns, feel free to leave them down in the comment section and I'll be down there like I normally do. Uh, and before we continue, hit that notification bell and subscribe to me, hey? So we can uh, keep in touch, best friends, all right? So let's get into this hair. Bye, you guys. All right, you guys, so this is what the packaging looks like. I really like this packaging. Um, and so the bag has um, the textures that it has and what you actually purchase at the bottom of the bag. So these are the bundles. You get three bundles and a closure. That's what I picked. You can either get frontals, you can get longer lengths, but I chose 24 common, common lengths. Um, I got a 24, a 22, 20, and an 18 inch closure. This closure is medium brown lace. It is supposed to be Swiss. The bundles are very neat, okay? And the the bundles have tags on them, which tells you, you know, how to take care of your hair and everything like that. Um, I did feel like the bundles was kind of crunchy first pulling out the bag, but, you know, that ain't nothing the little silicone mix can't fix, you feel me? But it's probably, that little crunch feeling is probably because of the fact that these are processed waves these are not natural waves so yeah what you are going to need for this tutorial uh, is a wig head the one on the right is the more expensive one that's about 60 to 70 dollars the one on the left the little black one is about 20 dollars the black heads are about 30 dollars so if you are trying to make wigs or you are a wig connoisseur and you like to make your hair look bomb i definitely suggest you guys get a wig head do not buy stone heads to make wigs because you are going to be mad at yourself at the end of when your wig is done and that thing don't fit okay um you also going to need some uh your wig caps i like to use mesh caps for my wigs i find i, I found mesh caps in different sizes so it's easier for me to make wigs for customers because I do have an online boutique, okay? Um, customers, small, medium, or large, or extra large. So I do, you know, have wig caps. So I like to use mesh caps. They're breathable. They're lightweight. Um, my head is just not suffocating, and you're going to need a Sharpie. So I'm going to put the closure onto the, the mesh cap, and you want to make sure it's flat because you don't want any gappage, okay? Because you're gonna see that gappage if you don't lay it down flat and your your closure is just gonna look a little wonky and you don't want that, all right? And I also pull the closure up a half an inch above the elastic band line because I want it to come out a little bit because at the end of this video, you're gonna see me cut the seams off this closure and what that does is just make sure that your closure lay flat. All right. I hope I'm not losing you guys. This is a crash course. If you want a full detailed tutorial of how to make a wig by hand and by sewing machine, I will leave those two videos at the end of this video. So you just have to watch this entire video to get to those videos so you can see that. And those are super detailed and you wouldn't regret it if you were to watch it if you are interested in making wigs. And if you have seen those videos, let me know down below in the comment section. Have you seen the videos and which one?
So now we're doing the guy lines, all right? You guys saw me outline my closure, and the reason why I did that was because you can either remove your closure after you, you know, do your guy lines, or you can sew your closure down. So to normally, I would remove my closure or my frontal because I move quicker with my sewing machine if it's not on there because I don't, it won't get caught up and it won't get in my way. But if you're a beginner, I would definitely suggest that you leave your closure on there, tack it down, sew it down, which you will see me do, um, and continue to sew your bundles onto your wig. So these are my guidelines. I use in between 11 and 15 lines depending on what I'm doing. And another question I get asked is, okay, you're sewing on the elastic band. Isn't your wig going to shrink? And no, it's not. It depends on how you sew on the elastic band. So you see me making lines across the elastic band, and I'm going against the stretch. Now, if I was to sew around the entire perimeter of that black band and put a track all the way around, I would not be able to move or stretch my wig because I'm sewing with the stretch of the wig. I hope that makes sense. But if you sew against the stretch, you will not, you will not mess up the elasticity of your wig because those gaps in between each track is stretching your wig so you could fit it on yourself. But if you sew it a track around the entire perimeter of your wig in that elastic band, then you will be causing um, constrictions of your stretchiness of your cap. I hope that makes sense. All right. So all I'm doing is tacking down the closure. This does not have to be super neat because you're gonna go end up going over it at the end of your wig make of uh, at the end of your wig once you're putting the final track on there. So this is what it looks like, and it's time to sew. So this is my sewing machine. I love to use the singer. All right, this is the only sewing machine I've ever used. I cannot recommend another sewing machine to you guys. This is the only one that I've ever used. Um, I'm pretty sure any sewing machine will do the same thing. I like this one because it has a lot of arm room and I can put my arms through and through through the sewing machine and it's not small. It's very heavy duty. It won't move easily. It has a, it has some weight to it. So I am going to double all of my bundles and I'm doing that because I want to work smarter not harder. And um, if you were to single track all of your tracks on your wig you will be sewing forever. To make these wigs, it literally takes me 15 minutes, and I like to keep it that way. So just know, if you purchase a handmade wig for me, this is what you're getting. And it's going to be secure. It's going to be bomb. She's not going anywhere. These, Everything is going to fit you the right way, all right? So I like to double my tracks. And, yeah, so we're going to just do the sewing portion. Again, if you want to see how to make a wig, I have a detailed tutorial for you at the end of this video. Okay, you guys, so this is the wig. This is what she is looking like. If you guys want to see a detailed how to make a wig video with the sewing machine, I will link a video down below. This is super neat. I did put an elastic band on there because I did want this to be glueless. Um, I don't want to wear glue. I want to just throw it, be able to throw it on and off. And yeah, so this is what she's looking like. The knots are not bleached, so I am going to bleach the knots. I am going to use 30 volume 30 volume developer with quick blue and I usually leave it on about uh, 15 to 20 minutes it just depends on the wig just make sure you watch your lace and your knots to see how they're bleaching sometimes you might need to leave them on longer sometimes you need to leave the ble bleach on less okay so it's up to you you need to watch your 
lace piece because you don't want to listen to somebody else and tell you to leave it on for 20 minutes and your lace ends up or your knots ends up over processing. Anyway, I'm going to wash it with whatever shampoo and then I'm going to use my uh, silicone mix to deep condition it and I am going to tone the knots with a uh, vanilla no yellow purple shampoo. I'm not going to show that because that I will just have to take all of my stuff, equipment downstairs and that's a lot. So, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do that and then we're going to do the application. So this is what my wig looks like after it was washed and I deep conditioned it. You know, I always deep condition my wigs with silicone mix. It just makes any hair last super long. So if you wear wigs, if you wear weaves, make sure you just always use silicone mix to deep condition your wigs. I am going to go in and plug. My favorite tweezers are, used, uh, are Revlon tweezers. I don't know. They just work better for me when it comes to plucking in. Like, I I just like Revlon tweezers. So, I'm going to put my favorite two pairs, three pairs of tweezers that I use down in the description box for you guys. I do order these off of Amazon or I might go to Target to see if they have them. But, usually, I get them off of Amazon because just ordering off of Amazon just makes life so much easier. <laughs> So as you saw, the closure was plucked, but it wasn't plucked enough. Like, you could leave it that way, but I wanted mine to look a little bit more realistic. Um, the line was very straight across looking, so I just made sure that I, like, made the front of the hairline less dense. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm not doing too much plucking. I just wanted to, you know, thin it out a little bit. So let's get this wig together. I made sure that the wig was damp, so I'm, I sprayed water on it first because by the time I got to styling it, it was kind of like drying out. So I put water on it and then I like to use my favorite mousse, which is my Cantoon, Cantoon Wave and Curl Whip. And I like to use that instead of gel because of the fact that gel, gel gets a little crispy, alright? Like it'll get a crispy when you uh when it's once it's dry. But the Cantoon mousse, it it'll like it'll it's anti-frizzy, so it's not gonna make your hair frizzy and it's not gonna give you that crisp, but it's gonna give you that that definition that you're looking for and that shine as well. So I love that. And right here I'm gonna just go in and just like you know mold my baby hairs to make it look how I want it to look. I decided that I wanted to do a side part because I don't see a lot of people doing uh side parts on four by four closure. So I was like, all right, let me do a little side part on the four by four closure. Normally, I wear my part on the white right side. I don't know what I was doing right here because I did it on the left side, and that's not the side I usually wear my parts on. But it was whatever. I still wore it because I didn't feel like going in and redoing that for hairline to match to put the part on the side that I wanted to put it on. And after I mold the hairline to how I want it, I'm going to go in and put a, a paper strip over it and let my hair air dry. And then once it's dry, it's ready to be put on. I cut off the end tabs to the lace because, like I said, it lays down flatter. You guys will see me do that. And we're going to just go ahead and install. So this is what the wig looks like after it's completely dried and she's very fluffy like I love her this is my complaint when it comes to like purchasing off of Amazon versus like their store it's hard for you to get two of the same lengths like 224s or 226 and then a shorter length it always goes from 24 22 22 20 20 or like a 26 24 22 because when you do like a 26 24 22 or a 24 22 20 your hair will not look as full as it is at the bottom so when I normally like get be able to pick the lengths that I want I usually get two of the same bottom lengths and then a shorter length to go to the top because it, it looks better that way so that's my only complaint and I, I hope that they hear this I hope all 
um, hair companies hear this that's on Amazon and let people be able to choose what what you know lengths that they want instead of you know giving them these lengths that make you have straggly bottoms but other than that i plushed i fluffed the ends of the wig out so it really didn't look like it but you know me i'm a wig wearer i'm a wig maker so i could tell So because this lace is medium brown, I'm going to take some makeup that's close to my natural skin color and I'm going to take a dense Real Technique brush and I'm going to just lightly put that makeup on the inside of the wig and on the parting. That's my natural hair. She has grown so much and I'm so proud of my journey thus far. We've headed to waist length, okay? Once I get to waist length, I'm stopping at that, that point right there. But yeah, I'm going to put my wig on and i am just going to maneuver and secure this wig on my head uh like i actually use got to be to help you know melt the lace in a little bit better but you don't have to do that you can stop right here you can finesse this hairline right here to make it look nice and you can leave it at that but i wanted to i wanted it to lay down a little bit more so i did spray some got to be free spray and i wrapped it down for a couple of minutes and that was it so let's talk about the quality. Is it the same quality when I receive the hair versus me purchasing the hair? And I think I see is very even on both boards. And I will I want to say this when it comes to extensions or wigs or whatever, it sometimes is user buyers issues like you know how they take care of their hair um and sometimes you just get a bad batch but sometimes it's just how you take care of your hair um because i have an online boutique a lot of people tell me their products that they use and i'm like no don't use these heavy products on your hair because those are the products that help Mat, mat, mat up your hair okay so um you don't ever want to use heavy products on like your brazilian or your peruvian textures because these are normal light textures so those are things that i would suggest to you guys just make sure you are deep conditioning and don't put heavy products a mousse is cool just let it air dry and don't touch it all right until next time bye best friends